Oi there, everybody. How's it going? It's me, your guy, Waddles, and welcome back to the Minecraft Guide. You meet me back over at the bee-powered crop farm that we set up last episode. Things are going really, really well. I think this baby bee is insanely confused with its job, but... Yeah, things have been running pretty well in between episodes. We have a quarter stack of carrots, not the best, but we're starting to stack up the honeycombs, which is really, really cool. I have a build in mind that uses honeycombs, so definitely a good thing. Maybe we could even come back and add some beehives around this thing eventually, but today. Today's episode is all about those shiny things, the great things, the blue things, the diamonds. In today's episode, we're going to talk about how you can find diamonds, and uh, even more importantly, how you can find diamonds quickly. Now, just like your first caving trip, the first diamonds that you find in your world will probably be the hardest diamonds to find. After that, things get a whole lot easier because you can start enchanting. Maybe if you're lucky, you get fortune three and boom, you have fully stacked diamonds in like no time. Now, diamonds will generate anywhere in your world below Y16. But diamonds do tend to be most common between Y5 and Y12. If you like statistics, diamonds actually make up 0.0846% of stone between Y5 and 16. Not very much, hey, kinda, kinda rare for sure. As I'm sure you guys are all well aware of, diamonds will drop one ore when mined, but this can be maxed out to four with a fortune three pickaxe. Now Minecraft presents us with three ways to obtain diamonds. The first way you could get your hands on some diamonds is by caving. Now caving can either be the easiest way to find diamonds or the hardest way. It sort of just depends on the cave systems that you're in and of course your luck. Maybe you're having some sort of crazy lucky day. You find a ravine, head down to the bottom of the thing and then boom, right away you have diamonds. Are we gonna have that kind of luck? A hey, probably not. I don't usually have that kind of crazy luck, but maybe, I mean, this world has been crazy so far. We found some pretty cool things, so I, I don't think it's off the books. I, I guess we'll find out. Now, this is the ravine that we found in episode three. I am kind of afraid of the thing, if I'm being honest. There's already like a bunch of mobs around here, which definitely bad because I forgot to make armor still. So gonna have to be really careful with this one. But uh, this is definitely what we're looking for when we're trying to find diamonds. We're getting, yeah, really deep in the world. Why 18? Uh, what is that? I think, I think the creeper just burned up. Uh, that's, that's probably good. That's, that's for the better. Now, I definitely don't recommend going into a ravine until you have a full set of armor because they're dangerous, but hey, uh, it's okay. It, it'll be okay. Now, uh, now that we're down here, we need to look around for the shiny things and we need to watch out for falling mobs. I, I have a feeling falling mobs are going to become a common theme while we're down here because, uh, yeah, this, this place has a lot of ledges. Now, when you're diamond hunting, you should definitely bring a water bucket. Diamonds generate really low in your world and lava also generates really, really low in your world. So you probably don't want to mix the two. Um, that, that wouldn't be good. It, zombies, they're also so not being very good. Now, like I said in the beginning, diamonds are super rare. That means this could potentially take a while and it also could be pretty dangerous depending on how prepared or unprepared you are. For us, since we have a cave system splitting off of the ravine, it's not too bad. Cave systems are usually a lot safer than ravines, so I, I think we'll look around here for a little bit before we head over to method number two. Uh, but uh, down here we got a lot of other stuff. I don't think we have found no no This is the first redstone in the world and I saw some lapis too, which is really good for enchanting I think I saw a little bit of gold back in the ravine don't know how much of the ravine I'm gonna mine out though and then of course the iron the iron is so nice still too because We still don't really have a bunch of this stuff water. You're gonna have to go away. Thank you uh, But diamonds hmm <laughs> I think we're close like this is definitely the right type of cave. We're really low in the world, but uh, That starts to go up. Y yeah, we don't want to go up past this point uh, diamonds. They're below y16 ah, Blue pickles nice the lapis. That's good. Thank you. Thank you very much now uh, what, what else do we have over here? A nothing. I, I think I've been down here. Yeah, I've definitely been down here. 
Now when you find areas like this, I definitely recommend taking water and dumping it and going through these areas because maybe, just maybe, you'll get super lucky and you'll find diamonds like back in this area like the lapis right there, but but definitely not lapis. Definitely take some time and turn all of the lava into obsidian and check out the hallways because, I mean, you never know. And now, ideally, you shouldn't skip a single ore when you're inside of a cave system mining, but realistically, that just kind of happens sometimes. Maybe you're loaded on coal, and so you're skipping this stuff. If that is the case, that's fine, but definitely don't skip it when you're super low in a cave system, because you never know. Maybe you'll get, like, crazy lucky. Uh, you'll start mining out some coal, and then the coal will lead you over to diamonds, which, that's that, that would definitely be a nice surprise. So, if you skip it everywhere else, hey, don't skip it down here you really just just never know hmm so it doesn't seem like i'm having a lot of luck in this side of the cave which means uh yikes but it means it's time to go back into the ravine after i pick up these ores and hopefully not not get dive bombed by creepers uh wait what's this i don't think i've seen this hmm yeah, yeah, no, I haven't gone this way. Never mind, that ravine, that can definitely wait a minute. Oh, oh, hey, who is that? Okay, skeletons, nice. Okay, buddy. Okay, and another skeleton. Okay, we're gonna just... We're gonna run. We're, we're gonna run. Hey, half a heart. Yeah, we're just gonna... Gonna come back over here and get this iron that I missed. Hey, yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> and okay 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 i saw him i saw him uh here's the plan we're gonna refill our health and we're gonna make a barrier wall and in case we're gonna come back to this hole but i think we can get him it should be good okay let's see yeah no that's that's no 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 you can just you can just go away the armor's cool and all but uh, I, I was kind of hoping you would drop it <laughs> ah, I, I guess that's fine. Okay, so just past those skeletons and the creeper was more of a cave system that seems to lead to a completely separate ravine. I don't think this is the same one. It's a little bit of a ways away, and I, I think I like the idea of this ravine a little bit more. It looks like it's maybe safer, and at least more open. So we're going to check this place for diamonds, and then if not, I think we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next method of diamond hunting but uh, what do we got anything oh there's a creeper okay that might be my sign <laughs> um no thank you yeah no thank you Oh, what? Okay. I, I Oh, hey, hey, that's really nice. I don't... Okay. Hey, we're going to get into safety because potato. Look at that. I just killed a baby zombie. The dude, the zoomer, was sprinting at me and yeah, um, killed it, dropped a potato. That's really awesome. I wanted potatoes instead of carrots last episode and that kind of worked out but the ravine so things don't look too good i don't think we're gonna find any diamonds down here so i'm gonna go ahead and finish taking the ores out of this place and then we uh, we're gonna move to the next method so i was here uh, removing some gravel because i said we needed to get better about stocking up on gravel this series and coincidentally i was really low usually when i'm like really deep in a world i do this whole torch trick thing and remove the gravel and um if you haven't noticed <laughs> take a look at that look at that beautiful beautiful blue rock right there so diamond number one and at least two of this world here we go this is crazy uh, i got really lucky here i guess when you're in the caves and you're down low and you find gravel maybe you should just take the stuff or at least break it with the torch and see what's behind it because wow uh we kind of lucked out but here we go here goes nothing uh, how many diamonds do we have I, I bet you we're gonna have eight eight is probably gonna be our number today mm hmm yes it is now one thing that i didn't do that you should maybe do is put some water below your diamonds especially if you're hearing lava i didn't hear any lava so i didn't do it but yeah definitely don't let your diamonds fall in lava but eight diamonds 
not bad uh but now definitely method number two for sure it's it's definitely time for that i, I just kind of got sidetracked i wanted to get everything the next way to find diamonds is definitely a whole lot safer but could potentially take a lot more time and potentially a lot more materials as well this method is the branch or strip mining method depending on what you'd like to call it so to do this first you'll need to staircase down to the bottom of your world i recommend going down to y11 but some people insist on y12 those people are wrong and some people say y10 also definitely wrong y11 is the way to go so make a staircase all the way down to y11 if you hit a cave on the way down be careful it could be dangerous just uh light the little bit of the cave up that's around your staircase and then get back to staircasing oh wow okay this is an adventure for another day but look at this we found an underground mine shaft that that actually looks not so underground this is definitely daylight over here oh that's daylight okay wow we're gonna put a torch right there and see if we can see that from by our base but yeah we're gonna talk about that uh, next time probably not today that's a mine shaft maybe they'll help you find diamonds actually they could method number three but uh, we're still on two once you've made your way down to y11 it's time to start digging hallways and uh, this could potentially be a lot of hallways now down here i like to make my branch mines fancy so usually i'll do a three wide by three tall center hall and then i'll branch off of this hallway so usually something kind of like uh this right here but a lot longer and then off of this hallway i'll create other hallways now your hallways should be spaced either two blocks or three blocks apart depending on what you'd prefer a lot of people will recommend doing three blocks apart to basically save time because usually diamonds will generate in chunks and if there's a single diamond in the middle are you really missing much but i don't like to do it like that i like to do my hallways two blocks apart just like this now these hallways should be two blocks high as well and basically straight and long like really really long now if you don't like mobs you should definitely be lighting these hallways up as well as you go you don't need to get too crazy but a torch every once in a while definitely wouldn't hurt now this method is really really safe especially if you're lighting everything up as you go but uh it, like i mentioned it could potentially take a lot of resources to do this especially if you don't have an enchanted unbreaking axe yeah you could burn through a lot of iron pickaxes now one potential workaround to this is to just use stone pickaxes when you're breaking anything that isn't an ore but stone pickaxes break things much slower than iron pickaxes and i don't have the patience for that so i don't really do that i just kind of end up burning through a lot of stone pickaxes now the bright side of doing this is if you're in need of other ores like coal redstone iron those kinds of things well you'll probably find a lot of those you'll also get a lot of cobblestone and probably a fair amount of the other blocks like granite and andesite as well so that's kind of a plus maybe you need those blocks for some kind of build then consider doing this because while you're taking out blocks you could potentially be finding diamonds which really isn't bad now I'm going to go ahead and set a timer and branch mine until I find diamonds then I'll come back and tell you exactly how long it took wish me luck hopefully it's not too long and about 18 minutes later here we are our first diamond or diamonds hey hey yeah more diamonds i knew it so 18 minutes hey not the best this time around sometimes i get more lucky sometimes i get less lucky but look at this um so i i started digging like hallways and stuff and then i was like you know what i i didn't really do anything in the first one so i came back started clearing out stuff found some coal and then found the diamonds which was really really crazy so 18 18 minutes down here or about 40 minutes in the caves i was in the caves for about 40 i didn't time it exactly because i kind of didn't think of it so diamonds in about half the time now of course a lot of this is going to come down to basically luck you could get really lucky and find diamonds right away in the caves or you could find diamonds right away when branch mining or it could take you a long time so just keep that in mind each method definitely has its own ups and downs 
Now, method number three. The third way that you could get your hands on some diamonds in your world is by looting. If you're lucky, you could definitely find diamonds without ever mining a single block. So on screen right now is sort of a, I guess, a chart that I made. All of the numbers and percentages were obtained from the Minecraft wiki. The percentages represent the chance that a diamond has to generate within a chest within any of these structures here. There are a lot of structures in Minecraft. These are all of the ones in which you can find diamonds. Now, some of these percentages are going to be a little bit different on Bedrock Edition, but they're generally pretty similar. So if you're super lucky and you happen to spawn by like an ocean with shipwrecks or maybe even a desert temple, consider sliding over to those things and checking out the loot inside of them because maybe you can skip right to a diamond pickaxe, which that's, that'd be kind of crazy. And so with that, that's how you find diamonds. I mean, it's really not that hard at all. Now, which method is the best? Well, that kind of depends. If you happen to have a really big, a really deep ravine near your base like I have, then maybe caving is the best option. If you don't, then maybe try branch mining. And finally, if you really just hate the caves in general, then try running around and looting like everything in your world. Maybe you'll find some diamonds. It's really all up to personal preference though. So that does it for today's topic, but uh, we definitely have one more big thing. So since last time, there has now actually been a stream. It was like really, really fun. Big shout out to all of you guys who came over there and shared all the love. It was just, it, it was literally just so amazing. And, and yeah, now in the stream, we did this over here. So this is a big wheat field, like a really big one. The plan is to make this uh, like an actual thing that I use in the series to stock up on wheat. I'd like to have a lot of wheat so I can make a lot of hay bales and this is probably gonna be the way to go. Now it's actually not fully complete. I think I'm planning on filling it in all the way over to the desert line and, and that goes uh, for both sides. So this side and that side over there. So it's got a little bit more to go, but really not too much. There is this cave entrance right here. I keep hearing mobs and there's a creeper, so we're just going to keep moving. But yeah, the field is pretty good. Now, over here on this side, I have some beehives set up. And then there's at least one bee going back and forth from the field to the beehive. But... Uh, I think I lost a bee and I keep seeing them wander over into the desert for some reason So I think the plan is to actually tear these out I, I did put a really basic support structure in and then a little bit of a pole But they don't seem to be working so well there So I'm thinking that right after this episode I'm gonna pull those things down and move them to the middle of this field somewhere Like I'll put one down there and then probably one over here And then work on getting more bees into it In the field, as you can see, there are some flowers so the bees actually have something to do here and then I put little bridges uh, throughout the field as well So we can actually move around easily inside of this now This is gonna be a giant dark space. So maybe not the best, uh, but eventually we'll come back in and oh great. There's a patrol Okay, that's welcoming um, Eventually we're gonna we're gonna put scarecrows in there But you know what? I'm just gonna go this way and let that patrol move on through now so far from this field I have this much wheat. That's that's pretty good. That's like a lot of wheat and that's really from just harvesting stuff on stream randomly. I also did spread the sugarcane a little bit over there, but we'll, we'll definitely get to making a better sugarcane farm very, very soon. Now, uh, patrol, why do you, why do you have to do this? Uh, I think that's the first patrol of the world. Um, and I still don't have iron armor, so... <sighs> you know what, we're gonna go for it. We're gonna go for it. Now here's the plan. If we could lure them one at a time, one at a time. Okay, guys, you, you follow me. You follow me this way. Yep, you guys can't really aim at all. Now, if we could lure them, like, kind of on their own a little bit, then, well, here, uh, we can let them shoot each other. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, wrong time to go into the inventory. And then we can run to safety when we need to. Like, like probably now would be a good time. We can run to safety back towards the house. But I really didn't want to have a bunch of pillagers in my house um definitely a lot against you guys okay 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 we're gonna take a break we're gonna you're gonna just take a break you guys better not hurt the bees though you better not hurt the bees so here we are i've cornered myself in i'm surrounded by the enemy but that's not a big deal because we can just walk outside and i don't know where they went uh hey guys we're over here still yep um 
go ahead and okay pillager you were supposed to shoot a little sooner than that buddy where's the banner i want the banner please do you you don't have the banner who has the banner do i no i don't already have the banner huh <laughs> usually they pass it around and they'll like pick it up right um huh wow um no banner i don't even get a trophy this has been the worst trade deal in the history of ever wow uh oh, oh never mind never mind here's the trophy so, I uh, guess we should explain that thing really quick before we end the episode. So that, that was a patrol. Patrols will spawn randomly in your world from time to time and basically move through the world. They're a group of illagers. If you kill the one with the banner on it, you'll get the bad omen effect, which will trigger a raid if you move into a village. We didn't kill the banner one. I think one of the other pillagers did that job for us, so no bad omen for us. That's really, really good. Actually, a pretty good deal. Now, the, the raids are basically just kind of annoying. They're not that cool. They're not that useful. But you do get these unique banners from them. So if you like banners, I, I guess they're kind of cool. If you're not properly prepared, these things are definitely kind of dangerous. But as you saw, they're also not that bad, especially if you just have cover like, like a building. It's really not the worst thing in the world. And that is where we end this episode of the Minecraft Guide. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, remember to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't yet. And if you want to catch next week's stream, it'll be at the same time, the day after Christmas, Thursday, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, then definitely slide down to the description and drop a follow on my Twitch as well. I, I really can't wait for the stream. Super excited. I think we're going to do caving in that one. Anyways, though, thanks for watching, and a big shout out to my patron, Ilya M, today. Thank you very much for the support. Happy holidays, everyone. Merry Christmas, and uh, goodbye. <laughs>